it's freezing out here. Whew, it is really cold. But uh, we've got here, this is, I hesitantly call this Windmill 22. You can see the basic design is just, you've got a sort of a, a circular shape with blades offset. It's really more like an impeller winch turbine. Um, I've had this design done for a while now, but I never showed it off because I took it out in some in some just real kind of lower wind speed tests and it didn't, it didn't do hardly anything. I mean, it worked, I knew that it worked, but uh, it was just lackluster. Um, and that's still, I think just, I use the same hardboard blades that I made for uh, Windmill 21, the heavy version. So I just figured I wanted to find a new purpose for these blades and this works. Um, it's definitely worth looking into. I think for these heavy blades, these heavy blades might be nice for making a real uh, durable wind turbine, but I think I'd want to use them in tandem with the dowel rods that I was talking about. I think that would be really cool because those dowel rods are very strong. They don't bend very much. Um, and you can create a design that, you know, separates the blades very far from the axis of rotation while also staying rigid and not being very heavy, which I think is a promising idea. You can see this works okay. This is a very windy day. Um, you know, I've been kind of clowning on vertical axis wind turbines for a while, but this one's got me excited. This one is actually, uh, it seems to handle gusts a lot better. And so, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open my heart. I'm ready to be hurt again by uh, vertical axis turbines. I'm gonna try again. I, I think this, this same design is worth it. I think brackets that attach to dowel rods is a very promising idea. So, got some new stuff to try and I'll be working on that here in the near future. And then I think I'm gonna have to stop recording because my hands are shaking. So I've drawn this here just as a little explanation. So the black circle is supposed to represent your wind turbine or whatever you're using to turn the wind into kinetic energy. You know, the red shows which way we're spinning, right? So if this was, if you imagine the black circle as you have it in front of you, right? That would be sort of a propeller arrangement. You would have something like this. Let me draw the blades. If you have your blades like this in this orientation, what you're going to end up with is an impeller. It's going to, it's going to, well, I always think that windmills are easier to think of from the perspective of something that generates wind. Because if you have something that can create wind in a given direction, then you have something that can collect wind as well, right? It's the same thing, it's just the inverse. So if you have this design here, imagine that the black pieces are a windmill or a wind turbine and you're looking at it head on. Right, it's facing the wind. So you have blades that are sticking out in all directions, sort of like a horizontal axis wind turbine. Well, what you've just made here is something that it's going to spit air out in all directions. You've made an impeller, right? And so I've, I've talked about this before. If you want to make it so that it can harvest the wind, then what you need is to angle these blades all in the same direction. And, you know, ideally at the same angle. Obviously, it's not quite like that here. So what I'm trying to draw that I'm not doing a terribly good job at is some sort of of some sort of fan that that blows from uh, front to back, right? So all of these fans, when you're looking at them, you know they're just they're improved designs of basically the propellers that I'm making. You know they're shaped aerodynamically for the best. You know they're optimized, but in theory, in in uh, principle, you know this is just you've got blades and they're just angled along the axis of rotation. So if you take this sort of propeller that we're imagining is facing the wind and you now stand it upright, the same propeller could in theory collect wind as well and turn it into kinetic energy. And so you think about it like this, the reason that an anemometer, have you ever seen the way that an anemometer is shaped? It's, it's really interesting, anemometer. And once you look at it, it really makes sense why it spins. You kind of look at this, an anemometer is a, you know, it's a wind turbine, why not? And so the reason is because the coefficient of drag in the back of the little ball shaped is less than the drag from the cup. You know what I mean? So, so when the cup is facing the wind, it's going to create more drag than if the back of the cup is facing the wind. So that allows for it to have this asymmetrical force that causes it to spin. And these windmills, these wind turbines that are vertical are, are no different. You know, if we, what's, what color should we use for the wind? Maybe, uh, maybe pink, why not? You know, if the wind is, whoops, if the wind is blowing from the bottom of this page to the top, you know, what you see is on this, on the left side here, well, the wind kind of just blows into the pocket and then just kind of shoots off, right? It, it's just going to kind of get sent off in a different direction. But here, it's going to go into this little pocket and it's going to get caught up in there and it's going to create this force on the turbine. And you can think about it such that, you know, if we invert the blades such that they were pitched the opposite direction, it would spin the opposite way. So what you're going for with these vertical axis turbines is a force that is asymmetrical. You're looking for drag that is more is greater when it's facing one direction towards the wind than the other. That's how you create that asymmetrical force that allows it to spin. So if I open up the CAD model for that windmill that I just showed you outside there, 
you know, you can you can see what I was going for, and that's basically the exact same thing that I drew for you in MS Paint. I think I, I was kind of, it was really late when I designed this, and I think I wasn't thinking quite right. I, I think these could have been a little bit better placed in regards to the axis of rotation. You know, something that's a little bit more uh, concentric, I guess that would be called. Um, but you can see what I was going for. I think I will end up having to print a new hub. I really, really, I'm really excited about dowel rods. I, I don't know if they'll work as well as I'm thinking they will, but but it really seems to me that it's equivalent, you know, increasing the size of the disc that rotates is equivalent to a gearbox. You know, you're trading RPM for torque. It's, well, kind of. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see. I'll say that instead. You know, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a physicist. I, I'm not trained in all of this, so maybe it's harder for me to predict what's going to happen than somebody that, that is trained in all of it. But it seems to me that if you have a larger circle, it's easier to push. Right, and that's because the linear distance that you're traveling is going to equate to less of an angular distance. At least that's that's what it would seem like to me. So, different things to try. I was kind of reaching a point where I was not sure what I was going to do for my next wind turbine, and now I feel like I have so many ideas that it's going to take me a while to pump them all out. So that's a that's a good problem to have, I suppose. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, I would really appreciate you giving it a like and considering subscribing or checking out my other videos. That helps me out greatly. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.